Hi there, students. This week, we are covering some of those newer shapes in Nemeth as well as long division. And I wanted to take this opportunity to go over long division on the abacus because you will see as you set up long division on the Braille Writer that the alignment, and especially if you were working it, the up and down movement on the Braille page would get to be more than a bit much. If you are in the class that's got this particular homework assignment this week that you're brailing, of course, you will be um, using some of those new symbols, the infinity symbol or negative infinity symbol, infinity just being a capital full cell in Nemeth. You'll deal with factorial. That's how you read it when you see those exclamation marks in the fraction. That's n factorial or n minus r factorial times r factorial. Factorial is just the AND contraction in Nemeth code. You've got some tally marks. Remember that in Nemeth, you braille tally marks the same way, whether they are sets of five that are crossed or sets of five that are spaced. And then you'll get to some division problems, which require lining up. If this is your homework and you see some little deviations between the beginning of the long division symbol and the rest of the bar over, please just assume those are all one. It's just a typographical thing that they don't quite line up. Please forgive that in the vision. So I wanted to show you how students actually solve these because yes, it's important to show Braille readers how long division is written, how it's worked on paper, but it is so inefficient with a Braille writer to do the work that way that students instead do the work on an abacus. The abacus does not solve any math problem for you. It is not like a calculator. The abacus is like scratch paper. It gives you a place to write down the intermediary steps, the steps along the way to solving the math problem, so that you can write them down, change things, cross things out, switch them around until you've figured out what your answer is. Braille students should always be allowed to use an abacus to do their work and only be asked to show one example of their steps written out if they need to show any. Otherwise, just writing the answer should be fine because this is the appropriate tool for the job. So for long division, and of course there are lots of other tutorials online and follow them, they're great. Uh, we generally set the number, the large number on the right and the number that we're dividing by on the left. So if I have 440, so it's 4, 4, and 0. Remember, these ones are five beads, and these are individual beads. Every bar is a place value. Um, 440 divided by 8. Of course, there are different ways to solve division, but I'm going to do the one that I think most closely follows long division. Abacus is great because if you don't know every single multiple and you get one wrong, it's easy to fix and change it as you go. Uh, but I would start over here by looking at how many times 8 goes into 4. There are methods that say skip one rod and start writing your answer to one to the left, and then as you move through, you end up with clear space to write that answer in. I also think it's perfectly acceptable when students want to start always in the same space farther over and just give themselves room to write. I don't have a problem with that either, so do whatever is your preference. I'd start with how many times does eight go into four? Eight does not go into four, so then I need to look at two numbers. As I start considering that next bar, that also means the answer I write would move over one bar. I'm gonna start from this little um, tally, this, this comma here, uh, from all of my answers, because that's the style that is easiest for me to keep track of personally. Um, and so I won't start writing my answer here this time because 8 does not go into 4. I'm looking at 8 goes into 44, so I'll start recording my answer over one place. How many times does 8 then go into 44? I know that 8 goes into 40 evenly five times, and I'll use that because it can't go into 4 at all. So 8 goes into 40 five times. I'll come over one rod and mark my five. Eight times five is 40, so I'm taking 40 away from these two bars. To take 40 away, I take four out of my tens column and I leave the four in the, essentially the ones column for that, though really it's the tens column for the problem, alone. Now I have, does eight go into four? And it doesn't, so I'm going to move over a row 
uh, one rod, consider that four with the zero next to it. How many times does eight go into 40? Again, that's five, so I'll mark five on my answer. Eight times five is 40. Here I have 40 to take away. And then there's nothing in my ones rod, so I have my full answer and I have no remainder. My answer is 55. If I looked at the next problem, it says 744, so I'll set that over on my problem side, 744 divided by six, so I'll set a six on the other side so I know what I'm working with. And again, I'm gonna start writing my answer right after this comma, but the other version is to start writing uh, a space to the left of your problem number. So I'm going to start in the first column. How many times does six go into seven? Six goes into seven one time. I'm going to find that comma, put one right in it, and this is the same as writing my one directly over the seven on the long division because I'm writing it in the first column of my answer. Six goes into seven one time, so seven take away six. You'll notice that I can do that directly, right? There's a six is a five bead and a one bead, and I can literally take away a five bead and a one bead and see what I have left. Um, or I can think seven minus six is one and clear it and reset to one either way. Uh, this bar is not clear, so now I need to consider two rods together. Got 14 in there because there's one in the tens column and four in the ones column. How many times does seven go into 14? Oh, sorry, six go into 14. Six goes into 14 twice. So I'm gonna add two in the next column over, just like I would write a two above the first four when I'm doing that. And then I'm going to subtract, right? You subtract underneath the problem. Six times two is 12. So I'm gonna subtract 12 from my 14, take away one from the tens column and two from the ones column, and I have two left. Now I move over a rod. That means my answer will move over a rod. How many times does six go into 24? It shows 24 in my rods. Six goes into 24 four times, so I'll mark that on my next answer place. Six times four is 24, so I can take away the 24. It's clear, I know I have no remainder. And the answer I would record would be 124, okay? So this is how long division is actually worked by most elementary students who are blind, rather than on the Perkins Braille Writer. Though their math worksheet, if it had a worked example, the TVI would absolutely write all of those pieces out. And it wouldn't be very cumbersome for the TVI because they could see all of the rows horizontally before they started writing it to line up, um, as opposed to if you were working it in real time. So here's another example, 412 divided by four, I'm gonna find this bar and this is where I'm gonna start my answer. Four goes into four one time. Just find that comma and put up a one. Take away four. There's nothing left in that row so I can move over. How many times does four go into one? Four goes into one zero times. So I'm not going to move any beads on this bar. But when I start considering the next rod, I will still move my answer over a place. And that's how my zero gets recorded is by moving my answer over. How many times does four go into 12? Four goes into 12 three times. Take away 12 and I have no remainder. So my answer is 103, 103. And then that would be the answer I would record on the worksheet. My last example in this one is a little bit larger number. So it's a thousands number. It's got to start over here, 3,816. Get that all set right, 3,816. And I'm dividing this time by nine. Oh, let's see on the internet if I know my nines facts. Embarrassing. I'll start in the first column. Three, does nine go into three? No, nine does not go into three at all. So I will move over and start considering the next rod. Here I have 38. How many times does nine go into 38? Well, I know a multiple of nine is 36. Nine times four is 36. So I can put my four there and take away 36. Six would be a five bead and a one. 
and I'd have two left over, two hundreds left over. That's the same as where print writers would bring down um, or would take away and get the two and then they'd bring down the next rod one to get the next piece to work with. We just start considering the next rod. How many times does nine go into 21? Well, nine times three would be 27, so that's too big. Nine times two would be 18, that would fit in 21. So I'll mark my two and I'll take away 18. 21 minus 18, I can take a 10 away from the tens. And then there aren't eight in the ones to take away, but I have 11 here and I know that 11 minus eight is three. So I might clear this and reset three because that's what I solved from my subtra subtraction step. Finally, I would look at my remaining numbers. I've got three here and six here. Be always remember to check above the bar on your rod to see if you have a five bead. Nine goes into 36 four times. That's a multiple. So that will go ahead and subtract and get zero. Again, these problems had no remainder because they're meant for little kids. My answer, I would come back and read off. There was nothing lined up in the thousands column, but my answer was 424 for that multiplication problem, or that division problem. Your next problem says, here are six other ways to write 2,333 divided by 11. Clear my rod, make sure I've got it all set. Three, 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 and a two. So 2,333 divided by 11. I can do this with a two digit number two. And then your worksheet shows six other ways it can be written. These are all the same exact problem written in really archaic typefaces so that you know how they are. Again, assume all of those signs actually connect and don't have little gaps in them. Sorry for the typeface error. But how would you actually solve that problem on an abacus? You would have to know your 11 facts and luckily 11s are pretty easy. 11, 22, 33, it follows a nice pattern. 11 goes into two zero times, so I'd leave that first rod blank. Comparing with the next rod as well. Now I'm thinking about the number 23 because that's what's showing on these two rods. 11 goes into 23 two times. I'm going to find the correct rod and write the 2. 11 times 2 is 22, so I'm taking 22 away here, and that leaves me with 1. Start considering the next rod again. 11 goes into 13 one time. Take away 11. Now I'm left with 2, and I can confirm 11 does not go into 2, so I know I've chosen the right multiple. If I'd chosen wrong, there'd be a remainder that was bigger than my 11. But since it's smaller, I move on. That's the same as bringing down another number. 11 goes into 23 two times, and that would be 22. I could take away the 22 and I would have one left. This might be a problem where I would write remainder one. This might be a problem where I would want to keep working it. And if I wanted to keep working it, that's where students add zeros and start bringing zeros down. And I can do that by just moving my one over so that I have a zero after it. Now I could look at these two bars and say 10, uh, 11 goes into 10 no times. I could look at three bars and I would have to move over where I was answering and figure out how many times 11 went into that. In reality, we're going to leave that as a remainder one problem and enjoy that at some point somebody on this worksheet changed part of the example, but not the rest of the example. So it doesn't match up. I think I'll go edit that before it goes um, out to students directly, but you can see that example here and the process. Similarly, uh, in seven, it says to describe the error and there's a whole worked problem. How would a student find the error in that? Maybe they could read through it and notice that a step was missing. So the teacher would braille this formatted worked long division problem and the student could follow each of the subtraction steps and see where something is off, see where something got brought down incorrectly, whatever that might be, what step got missed or they might work it on the abacus, do all the steps and see which step is not recorded on the paper. So that's just a little tutorial on how an abacus might be used by elementary students learning long division. Happy brailing!